in this country was a determination to annihilate us, to kill us all out. But from Western Australia to Tasmania, to the top of Australia, we survived the genocide. Being belong, joining the cooperative is, is like medicine, like good for me, and healing and all that. And it gave me identity, the cooperative. Yeah. Yeah. When Bomali Aboriginal Artists Cooperative was formed, there was a group of 10 people that were involved in it. So they were the foundational members and it was incredibly exciting and uh, very much a snapshot for change in the country, I think, because it led the way in terms of um, stopping people from questioning the validity of a human who would say they're Aboriginal. Stereotypes and identity that were largely um, promoted by non-Aboriginal people through ignorance were things that we actually challenged. As a cooperative, we've got, I think, over 50 members. We're from New South Wales Aboriginal language groups. Some live in the city, some live in regional small country towns within New South Wales. We do a few, few different exhibitions around different issues that are, arise around Aboriginal um, self-determination and around um, putting our story out there, especially in the arts. All our exhibitions are political because the, we're trying to create social change. The social change is, the, is, I reckon, is the primal objective of the Mali. My last piece, The Death of the River, informing people on a natural disaster that's happening right now. That's, if that isn't a, a social piece, I don't know what is. Empowering, I think, is, is probably a really good word to describe the members of Bomali. I went to one of the opening exhibitions and fell in love with the place and it has been uh, pretty much the launch pad of me becoming, um, I guess, an emerging artist full time, which has been great. So a lot of the other galleries that I had come across had kind of featured Aboriginal art as tourist art and it pretty much gave a kind of a stereotypical representation of what Aboriginal art is. It generally featured a lot of intricate dot work or very intricate line work um, and I guess is what internationally like the, the, the kind of stuff you see in like souvenir shops and things like that. Aboriginal art is storytelling. I guess certain kind of stories and conversations and things that need to be remembered. So for me, it's they're my stories and they're my experiences and being able to share that with people and one day share that with you know my family, my children, and, and pass those things on is um, extremely important to me. As a young Aboriginal Australian, growing up was a little bit difficult depending on where you were. Coming into the city, there's a lot. There's still a lot of racism. There's still a lot of stereotypes there's still a lot of prejudice and it does become a bit tricky in feeling confident and feeling comfortable in being able to express your identity and show that to the world. Despite that, a lot of intergenerational trauma about growing up Aboriginal in Australia, um, like not being able to speak language and, and things like that kind of, I 
are things that make me feel incomplete, but there's also a huge sense of pride in, in being able to say, yes, I'm Aboriginal. Um, and this is where I'm from. Like I know where my family's from. I feel connected to those places. Um, but there's definitely still a lot that we can do in this country to really kind of celebrate the world's oldest continually living culture um, that is so rich still, despite everything that's happened. So I'm very lucky. We've actually been host to a lot of very um, influential people that have come through Bamali and are now part, intrinsic part of the Aboriginal Australian art scene. Bamali's been an enabler of many people for their careers. Getting really good wages for, well, industry, um, remuneration for artists, better contracts, and we're getting a larger cut of, you know, what Aboriginal artists can do in the city in terms of public artwork. When I first finished art school, there's not a lot of jobs in the art industry. So luckily for me, I found a job working in an art gallery. And some of the artists that I'd studied over the years, I actually got to sell their works and things like that. And it was an amazing experience. However, the longer I was there, the more I was learning, I actually started to see that it wasn't as great as I thought it was. We would buy our artwork from wholesalers and my job was actually to mark up these artworks 300% and price them to be sold to the public. So what really stuck with me was how much is the artist actually getting? These poor artists work tirelessly in hot conditions in the middle of the desert, sometimes in tin sheds, painting and painting and painting. Some of these paintings that will sell for tens of thousands of dollars, whereas the artist who actually created it is probably lucky to see a couple of hundred. With Bumali, that's actually helping us get more share of the price. Bumali is something really special to me. It's the first of its kind in Australia. It's owned and run by the members. So it's important because it's community. And as an Aboriginal person, Community is everything. No one questions who I am because of the colour of my skin. There's no question of identity. Everyone understands each other. It's a place that you can go and be safe and present yourself safely without criticism. Um, and it's also supportive, you know. There's, they bring in so many walks of life and artists and clients that it's a great opportunity for us to, to sell our works that we wouldn't normally get to sell. Facilitation and enabling, I think, is inspirational for younger people because sometimes older artists can just be so consumed with themselves that they forget there's a generational shift and as much as we can teach them, they have a lot to teach us. So the reciprocity of intergenerational exchange is absolutely elementary in the growth of any society. So if Bamali is just a society. I'm a founding member, there was 10 of us. I was a 50 year old person and they were all in their early 20s. So <laughs> I'm put into the position as chairperson because I'm the elder. And then um, pe and people respect the elders as being the authority. I saw my parents as being my first teachers. And I didn't think of them as teachers until later in my life. We'd sit under the stars like most Indigenous people around the world do. And they'd say, what can you see up there? Can you make a picture out of those clouds and that? Or if we were going along the creek bed, can you see a frog in those rocks along there? So. Even though they were teaching me, I didn't see them as until later in my life when I got involved with Bavali and I had to start doing 
things all the time. I didn't realise that. I do the same with my great-grandchildren now. The black re represents the people. The sun represents where all the energies come from. And the red represents blood of the land. I want Australia back. I want the bush back. I want all our animals back. I don't want these cows in. With my art, I try to show the people before contact with white man, the country, the bush, all the trees. There. People say, why aren't you in Sydney? And why aren't you down in the big, big smoke, you know, doing this and that, and you're, you're wasting away here. And it's like, no, I don't think I am. I don't feel like I am. I'm here because I want to be here. I want to share my, my art from my home country first and have everybody here on board. Like I have some, like one of the buses in town has a big piece of mine on it. And I'm glad that Bumali keeps me in the loop so I can keep on creating and keep on putting messages out there and um, educating the world because the world needs education. I'm black and I'm white, but I'm always in the middle of all of this. So I'm often a bridge between both the cultures. This is my country. This is my country. I'm, I'm, I'm going to fight from here first. I'm not going to go like in the old days, you know, when they had war and stuff and conscription, you had to go away and fight, you know? And they took our people away and they fought. I'm the opposite. If I was back then, I wouldn't have went. I would have stayed home and I would have got my own gun and I'll stay home and fight. And the same way with that gun, I'm fighting with this here, this paintbrush, you know, and pencil. Bumali, it's bumile. We say bumile. That's fight. I'm fighting to strike, to hit, you know. And um, that's what we're doing with our art. We need, as a global community, to join hands and create change with our young people, our old people, and whoever I fit in. To collectively work together is a better way to pursue equality and egalitarianism across the world. So if we work together as a, a group of people globally, we can make change. And we have to start here. We have to start in our own communities and societies. I'm a stolen generation person and I was taken away from my family in 1959 and I was four years old. So I'm fortunate to be here because I come from strong people. I teach young people to be strong in that belief. Uh, never be put down by anything that anyone says. Don't let it, it may upset you but be strong of who you are as an, as an Kuru person. That is the power, because we survived it. We, we survived genocide, and we're still around.